Today's topic is measurement techniques. Uh, that is topic 1.2 of physics 5054. The first topic that is included in our syllabus is measuring length. And the technique that we are going to study is the measurement of length with a rule we usually use a rule in classrooms to draw margins or uh, we use in geometry to take some measurements uh, we also use the rule that is a meter rule in physics laboratory while taking measurements from a rule or measuring the length of a wire these precautions has to be taken number one wire must be straight number two wire must be laid alongside the rule Number three, end of the wires must be neatly cut. Number four, one end of one end. the wire must be on zero and the last that is necessary that the other end must be read accurately if we follow the following precautions the reading that we obtain for the length of the wire or anything else will be the accurate the next topic is to measure something that is very thin for example measuring thickness of one card from its back as you know a packet of playing cards uh, contains 52 pieces we use a technique in which we take two steps first step is to measure the thickness of large number of same things and the second step is to divide the length with the number of that things for example as i have stated earlier that if we have to measure the thickness of one card from 
its pack of 52 cards so we will take the length of that whole packet the thickness of that whole packet by using a ruler and then after finding out that thickness we will divide it with the number of cards that is 52 so that we will get the thickness of one card from that 52 pack of 52 cards the next topic in length measurement is the measurement of a curved line we often call it circumference the trick that we use to measure the circumference or a curved line length is to take a thread and lay it along a line next step is to mark where the line ends next step is to measure the thread on a rule for example if we have to measure the circumference of a cylinder so we will take a thread and tie it around the cylinder then we will measure this thread by the meter rule so that we are able to find out the length of curved lines the next topic we have measuring volume there are two cases in which we measure volume one is we have our regular shaped object if we have a regular shaped object its volume is calculated by means of a formula for example if we have a cube then the formula that we use to measure volume is L cube where L is the length of each side of a cube the next we are discussing is cuboid cuboid is also a figure in which length breadth and height are multiplied to obtain the volume similarly the formula for cylinder is pi r square h and for a sphere it is 4 upon 3 pi r cube now moving on to the next topic that is if we have uh, an irregular shaped object and we have to find its volume in this case we use measuring cylinder to determine the volume of an irregular shaped object now I'm going to discuss how we use measuring cylinder 
to determine the volume of an irregular shaped object. Uh, let's suppose that irregular shaped object is a stone of this shape. We cannot use any instrument like rule or any other length measuring instrument to find out the volume of this irregular shaped stone. So we will use a measuring cylinder. It's a cylindrical vessel that is used to measure the volume of liquids. We will take some initial volume of the water or any other liquid that is suitable according to the object. That initial volume is let's suppose we can read it from here that is V1. Now we will add this sphere in this cylinder. Now after we put after putting that sphere in this cylinder, measuring cylinder, its volume is increased and as you can see it was here, now it is above the previous mark. And this raise in the volume is because of the irregularly shaped object that we have placed it in the cylinder. So the volume of this sphere of this uh, irregularly shaped object can be given by the difference in two of the volumes because this increment in the volume is because of this irregular shaped object. There are few precautions that one must take into account while using this method. One look scale horizontally second read level on the bottom of meniscus and the last one use a cylinder that is 3 to 4 times larger than what we are measuring. There are some other precise measurement tools that we use in the laboratory that are vernier calipers and micrometer screw gauge. Their use and importance is not included, is uh, not necessarily included in our 5054 syllabus. So I am not including this session in this video. I will make a separate video for how to use one year caliber and micrometer screw gauge. 
another important measurement that we usually take in the laboratory is the measurement of time we usually use two apparatus one is the stop clock and another is the stopwatch both works in the same order the important use of time measurement is to calculate the short intervals of time and for example if a pendulum uh, the one swing of pendulum when it moves from here and then back and then goes here at its extreme left position and then came back to the mean rest position this one cycle the time pendulum takes for completing this one cycle is called as a period and if we have to find out the period of a pendulum then it is likely to get errors in the reading if we take a single cycle to make our measurement more accurate we will take a stopwatch and count fifty periods with a stopwatch counting fifty period means we will take the reading of 50 periods from the stopwatch that how long it takes to complete 50 periods of this pendulum and then divide the time by 50 we will get the time period of one swing of the pendulum.